Hello everybody! In my previous video I talked about Alexander II. Tsar was the most famous for abolishment the serfdom. So, today I will talk about this institution. To understand serfdom, we need to travel back to the 15th-16th centuries. After independence from Golden Horde, Ivan III started to extend Moscow duchy territories, joining ex-territories of Kiev and Rus. That's how Moscow duchy became a Tsardom of Russia. To extend territories, Ivan III needed a professional military class. Those warriors, or dvarians, served duke and received land in return for their service. That land included villages with peasants who grew agricultural products and did cattle breeding. Dvarians protected them and could offer financial help in terms of loans. In return, peasants paid a tax to landowners and had to do corvi or barshina, unpaid forced labor. There was a social contract. Dvarinin serves and peasant works to feed him, a classical feudalism. Peasants were economically dependent on dvorans, but were free men who could change their landowner, choosing the best one. This freedom was a problem for Ivan III. Looking for better opportunities, peasants could migrate to other villages living in problematic territories. So Ivan III decided to limit peasants' freedom in his law, the Sudebnik 1497. This document officially laid the foundation of serfdom in Russia. The Sudebnik allowed peasants to change landowners, but only one week before and after a religious holiday of Yudiv Day, November 26, and only after paying landowner a sum for using his land. This law was active for 80 years until the last phase of Livonian War, when Ivan IV established forbidden years due to sharp population decrease. Forbidden years was a temporary ban on landowners' change, but this ban became permanent and Yudiv Day was cancelled in 1597. Tsar also made fixed years, the five-year time frame for search of the runaway peasants. Many people ran away because it was the only way to change your life. If you were not found in five years, you became free. That's how the Cossacks as a social caste was created in Russia. In 1607, the time frame for search was increased up to 15 years, and those runaway peasants who were not hiding anymore were brought back to their nobles. In 1647, Tsar Alexei Mikhailovich made the search for a lifetime, so the peasants had to stay with his landowner all his life. Children of peasants were also serfs. Peasants could get married only with landowner permission and he was responsible for all peasants' property. In 1690, Peter the Great made a decree which allowed to sell serfs without land. As Tsar wanted to speed up Russian economic development, he needed a lot of labor for shipbuilding industry, his personal passion. So, he bought peasants from landowners and assigned them to factories. They were sold like machines. Serfs who worked in the field had some freedom. If they work hard, they could live better. Serf from the factory had no perspectives for a better future. The life of a servant in Varan's house was not easy as well. All of them, maids, cooks, coachmen, work for food and place to sleep. They were fully dependent on their landowners. So, is serfdom or slavery? No, although both serfs in Russia and slaves in America were not free and were forced to work for their landowners, there were fundamental differences. Russian peasants had their own house and could rely on help from other peasants. Slave was a tool which brought revenue minus cost. Slave was a property which was not protected by the law. Only the high price of slave could affect landowner's behavior and attitude. Peasants were considered a state's population, paid taxes, were mobilized to the army. Their life was protected by the law, but not everybody obeyed that law. Tsaritsa Elizabeth made serfs' life slightly easier. She allowed them to trade, fish and hunt, but she also allowed Varams to send their serfs to Siberia as a punishment. 
reign of Ekaterina II was a golden age of Dvarians. Now they could send serfs into exile for hard labor whenever they wished to. Ekaterina stopped to accept peasants' complaints on the topic of landowners' violence. She also created a new law which required peasants to pay for military units which were used by landowners during peasants' revolts. After Ekaterina II, there were some relaxations. Pavel I limited Barshina or forced labor on landowner for three days in a week. Sunday became an official holiday. He prohibited to sell peasants without land like slaves and to divide families. But landowners found some ways to escape the law. For example, when the land was confiscated, peasants were not allowed to be sold on auction. But the law did not say that peasants could not be sold, just only not during the auction. By 1840, serfdom was abolished in Baltics. Landowners could let their peasants free. Now, peasants could even sue their landowners. During Nicholas I's ruling, about 200 landowners were arrested for mistreating peasants. So, what did mistreating include? It included all physical violence and concubinage. One case was extremely notorious during Ekaterina II. Landowner Saltekova is remembered as a crazy sadist who killed hundreds of serfs. During trial, 38 deaths from her hands were proved. The court took away her Dvoran statues and she was sentenced to life imprisonment. Some peasants didn't want to wait for justice and rebel. Landowners were shot, slaughtered, and strangled. They burned landowners' houses and, after, ran away to the forests. In Smolensk province, landowners complained that, for several years, more than 50,000 peasants ran through the Polish border. The most famous peasant rebellion was conducted by Emilian Pugachev. He pretended to be an Emperor Peter III and called peasants to rise and kill Dvorians. Many peasants joined Pugachev, but in the end, non-professional peasant army lost to professional military, and Pugachev rebellion was the biggest in Russian history. So, some of the educated nobles saw that the changes needed. Peasants needed good conditions of living and working. For example, famous general Alexander Suvorov took care not only of his soldiers, but also of his serfs. He didn't make them work day and night, tax was relatively small. To newly wedded couples, Suvorov gave them rubles to buy necessary things for their house. All peasants received pension. Over time, serf became richer and could buy his freedom. Vodka king Pyotr Smirnov, railway king Pyotr Gubonin came from serfs. However, these were outlier cases. Millions of peasants stayed with their landowners. Many nobles saw the necessity of abolishment of serfdom. Russia appeared to be a backwarded country in Crimean War. Sailboat could not compete with the steamship. British guns were better than Russians. Russia needed an industrial revolution, which requires labor that belonged to landowners. Alexander II abolished serfdom and 23 million people received civil rights. The land was kept by landowner, but the peasant could buy it from him. The price was 16.5 annual taxes. The government lent 80% of sum to the peasant with 6% interest rate. On average, a peasant could pay off his debts in 49 years. Nevertheless, in the next several years, there were 2,000 peasants revolts. They did not want to work and pay to the landowners, but all the revolts were suppressed. The last payoff should have been made in 1932, but after Revolution 1905-1907, the government forgave all debts. That's it for today, thank you for watching my videos, please subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!